Hi there. So today we are going to talk about the next generation NPLEX and we are going to focus on the integumentary case today and see how you do in this one. So this is the scenario which is given to you, the case presentation. A 37-year-old female came to the clinic with concern over a mole on her face. The nurse started the assessment. The client appears healthy, has blonde hair and freckles over the face. The client is worried that might be cancer as she has family history of skin cancer. She also notices that she gets sunburned very easily as she's working outdoors most of the time as a tour guide. Now the question is, highlight the areas which represent an increased risk factor for skin cancer in this client. She's worried that it's a, it might be a skin cancer. So what are the things you think, or from your information, your knowledge, what are the things you can see for this client that it's increased risk? highlight those areas. Now, if you think about what you have learned in the lessons about the skin cancer and the risk factor, I'm going to show you that. You might remember about the sunlight exposure. The leading cause of skin cancer is the sunlight exposure and especially the UV light, the ultraviolet light. And maybe people go for, for, go for tanning salons or using sun lamps are also equally getting that ultraviolet rays, which is really harmful. And the other thing about the risk is the light skin people, people with red hair, blonde hair, or blue or green eyes, or, or someone who has a lot of freckles will come also under also in that category. And if they have a family history or they have a personal history of skin cancer, or if they are elderly, like or above age 60, that's going to be another risk factor. Adding to all that is another part which we can think about is the outdoor occupation. Now, if someone is having outdoor occupation, but they do take care of their sun protection, then it should be okay. But most of the time, it may not happen. I mean, if I really ask you, how many times do you put on sunscreen before you get out of the house? Really? Right? So that's what it is. It's very important that they know that's the risk factor. So knowing all these things, what do you think, or can you highlight what are the areas which you think in this client is an additional risk factor? for a skin cancer. So I hope you got the idea and you got the answers because it says, I mean, the age doesn't um, come because we said it's mostly like 60 or above. So she's in, not in that category, but blonde hair and freckles. Okay, that's something which might put her at risk for easy to get the skin cancer risk, um, you know, for that patient because it's very easy to get sunburn from for them. That's the reason too. And a family history of skin cancer. And she says that she gets uh, the sunburn very easily and she's working outdoors. So those are kind of the things which you want to highlight um, as, because the question is asking you to highlight on them. So that will be your answers, right? Okay, so we are, this is an unfolding case study. So we are going with the same case. Then it says the nurse assessed the mall and obtained the below findings. Indicate with an X whether the findings are indicative or non-indicative of melanoma. Now, you already know about melanoma from our class, probably, or uh, you must have heard about the ABCDE um, method of figuring out whether this is suspicious uh, for melanoma or not. We are not going to diagnose anybody with our ABCDE, okay? I mean, it's just for us to have a warning or to identify if there is a risk, if there is a chance. So we cannot identify or diagnose anybody as a cancer patient of any kind without having the proper diagnostic, most probably the biopsy results. We are not the ones who are going to say anything about that, right? So it says uh, these are the things which the nurse assessed. So what do you think is, is it indicative or not indicative? Now for each one, you will have to click on somewhere because if the mole has dark brown color, either you have to say it's indicative and put an X on it, or you have to say non-indicative or not indicative of melanoma and, and click on X on that. So that's how you will be answering in the exam. But here I'm going to just go through each one and, and let you answer and, and just think about it, okay? Uh, you can also pause this video for now and then make your own answers and see if you got the same one which we are talking about. Because the more you get involved by using your brain cells to think, the more it's going to stick with you and it's going to be like a lot, lot helpful when you're actually writing the exam. 
So do your part. Pause the video, do the answers, and then see if you got the right ones. I'm going to show you them. Here we go. The mall has dark brown color. Now, why I'm saying that is not indicative? Because if you remember about melanoma, in fact, I can show you the melanoma, some of those, um, these all are melanomas, all right? You can see these are multicolor. It's not just one uniform color. In melanomas, we say that the color, if it is uniform, just the same one, then probably it's less chances. But if it has different, different colors, like you can see different colors in the same mall, that's probably melanoma. So in this one, it says it's just dark brown color, which means just one. And that's why we are going to say it's not indicative of that. Then it says the mall has gotten bigger over the last few days. Ah, that could be a problem. We don't know for sure, but she says it's few days. So usually, you know, the changes happen a little bit more slowly. Sometimes people will say it's getting bigger over the last few months or it is changing shape over the last few weeks. I mean, those are really concerning. But here we are going to say indicative because the A, B, C, D, E, the last one E is evolving. And evolving meaning the change in size or shape or texture or you know or something new come up, came up. So that's that's going to be evolving. And we are just going to put it as indicative because the client says it got bigger or the nurse found out that it, it's gotten bigger. So we are going to say it's indicative. All right. And then the client says that it's itching around the mall. Now, that is not going to be indicative of that because we don't know if it was itching all the time or if it is now or you know, there is not much change which happening there. It's just itchy. And just because something is itchy doesn't make it um, you know, a cancerous one. So we are going to say it's non-indicative. When something is itchy, it's probably because of dry skin or maybe there is something allergic things going on, right? So that's, that's why we are going to put it as non-indicative. Now the mall has defined a round shape. Mm. You saw all those melanomas. None of them has defined a round shape. It's all knotty edges, right? It's like spreading. It's not symmetrical. And A is asymmetry. B is border. And we know the border, if it is nice and round, probably it's not melanoma. But you see the melanomas are not nice and round. So here it says the mall has a defined round shape. Definitely it's not indicative because if it was melanoma, it would have been really knotty and, and ridges and stuff like that. And here skin around the mall is dry and scaly. Again, it's like that, the, the itching. The skin around the mall is dry and scaly doesn't make it melanoma, right? We don't have that in our A, B, C, D, E either. So that's why we are going to say non-indicative. The mole is the size of a small P. Now, how, what is the size of a small P? And that's why I have this slide here. This is the tumor size uh, comparison, which we sometimes use when the patients doesn't know. I mean, obviously when you think about a normal person, they may not know what is the diameter or the size in centimeters or millimeters of everything, but they might be able to tell you um, connecting with the everyday things they see, um, like fruits or nuts or something like that. And that's why this is something which we use as a comparison. So this is the small piece, like one centimeter. Okay, and the, you, you can see like a grape is three centimeter, or if you look at the lemon, it's like five centimeter, or, or an egg is six centimeter, and, and uh, an orange is like 10 centimeter. That's kind of the comparison we can use when the patients say um, things like, you know, it, it is the size of a lemon or it's the size of a grape. You kind of have an idea. So here the patient is saying the mole is, the, I mean, or the nurse is figuring it out and it says the small is small p, which means it's about one centimeter. Now in our ABCDE method, we said if the diameter is more than six millimeter, it's millimeter, it's not centimeter. So if it is diameter is more than six millimeter, we are worried. Now it's the, it says it's about one centimeter. So one centimeter is definitely, you know, more than six millimeter because um, according to the mathematical calculations, you can see one um, centimeter is equal to 10 millimeter. So definitely it's, it's more than six. So I'm kind of worried about the size of that more, right? 
So I'm going to say, yes, that's probably indicative. Now, I'm not saying that because two things came under indicated that this mole is going to be um, a melanoma. I'm not going to diagnose like that. I mean, but I at least have an idea, right? And the proper appropriate reference and can be done because the client is coming to the clinic. All right. So I hope you got that right. Now let's talk about a little bit more. Now the nurse is providing teaching about the prevention of skin cancer and select the following teaching as appropriate or inappropriate. Basically, this patient is, uh, we don't know what is the diagnosis, it doesn't say that, but the nurse definitely wants to teach about preventing skin cancer and what are the things which are okay to do or not okay to do, appropriate or inappropriate. Avoid the sun between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. And then you will have to say yes or no, or like appropriate or not appropriate. You have to select them accordingly. So I will let you go through each option and figure out. And if you have to pause the video, do that. Use your brain. Got it? Okay. So this is the answer. Avoid the sun between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Definitely yes. Yes, because that's the base, that's the time most of the you know, ultraviolet rays that are available and it's, it's already like people are outside and the sun is giving a lot of rays and it is better if they can avoid. Now, we are not saying that everybody should be like out inside, you know, with all the curtains drawn uh, during that time. It may not be possible, especially for this person who is a tour guide, might have to be outside and giving all the instructions to all the people who are coming to visit whatever place she is, the tour guide, as, as working as a tour guide. So, but she may have to do a lot of, you know, protection to prevent the suns. But if possible, avoid the sun between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. And we say it's an appropriate thing because sunlight, sun exposure is the, is the main thing behind the skin cancer. Exposure to ultraviolet radiation from sun is major cause of skin cancer. Yes. That's something we would like them to know, like to teach, because that way they know the importance of avoiding the sun or making the proper sun protections. Uh, to minimize ultraviolet exposure to snowy or cloudy days for outdoor activities. That's a misunderstanding. Even if the cloudy days are there, even if clouds are there, even if it's um, snow, all the, you know, it, it's snowy, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that the ultraviolet is blocked by the clouds, no. Even snow can reflect ultraviolet rays. So you still have to be protective of your skin and put on that sunscreen and um, use, you know, hats or, or glasses or whatever you need to use for sun protection. So it's, it's not going to be helpful just to minimize the activity. Now, the next one, apply sunscreen few times before starting outdoor activities. The sunscreen, the best time to apply is at least a little bit more before, like 15 to 20 minutes before going out. So that way the sunscreen will, um, or the lotion or whatever you're using will take time to make that protective film. So that way the ultraviolet rays can be, um, you know, they can block it um, as appropriately, right? So a few minutes may not be enough. 15, 20 minutes is actually a good time. That's why we are going to put it as inappropriate. Use sunscreen with SPF. SPF is sun protection factor. And you will see in your creams and in, in most of the lotions and everything you will see it says SPF. So it says 15 to 30 for daily use. And, and that's okay. I mean, um, the more it is, the, the higher the number, the more time it might be helpful to protect. But 15 to 30 on a daily basis, I mean, if you're for daily activity, it's, it's good enough. It's, it's, it's usually something we suggest. And then it says reapply sunscreen every two hours unless using a water or sweat resistant product. Now, whatever is the product, um, it says sweat resistant or water resistant. It, it is always, always better to reapply every two hours because it may not, it may still wash off. And it may not be there on your body completely protecting. Like, for example, if you are outside in the beach and you're in the water or you're swimming in the pool and you put on the sunscreen and uh, two hours later, it might not be there as protective as it's supposed to be. So we always, always say no matter what the, what the label says, 
you need to reapply the sunscreen every two hours, especially for kids when they go out into the swim, into the pool, and they're always active and they're sweating and they're, we need to reapply the sunscreen. After two hours, take it as it's gone. Right. Okay, so that is very important to remember, and I hope you got some value from this video, and I hope that you got to apply some of this knowledge, and take care, and all the best with your exams.